Okay, let's uh, continue on with this uh, foot controller now. This will be part 26B of the step-by-step -step restoration of the Singer Model 337. So I, I, I got this foot controller all apart now. I did spray that uh, nut and screw with the WD-40 and while I was letting it uh, penetrate I cleaned up the electrical cords. They came out real nice and, and they usually do and I uh, sprayed the, uh, the casing and everything with the crud cutter and it came out very nice. Then I went back to this controller and I was able to uh, break the nut free with the needle nose pliers and the screwdriver. So I have it disassembled and, and I was uh, surprised with what I found because this one is different than the other ones that I've done. Uh, where the other ones had little tubes with these carbon discs this has more of a, um, it looks like carbon rods in there and I can't get them out. There's a little metal uh, bracket that holds it in or guides it and it's riveted in from what I can see and, and I didn't want to try and grab the carbon with needle nose or anything and, and see if it would pull out because I, I know the discs are real fragile and I was afraid that I would uh, chip it or break it. So this uh, this one's a little different but it was uh, very dark and a lot of uh, carbon dust in there so I cleaned up one side with alcohol I'll just I'll just clean up the other here to get all the carbon dust out it, everything looks good, uh, just just everything was black with carbon dust, like like that. So I had it cleaned up. I put some oil on the rubber feet to let that start soaking in um, while I was doing this, and then these parts that that <laughs> that. I took apart, I inspected them, and they did, they have some normal wear and tear, um, where these little carbon rods meet the contact, I'll show you in a minute, there were some little burn marks and, and uh, deposits there, so I got those all cleaned up, and all I did with those, this is the end spring it's like a little uh, it's like a little uh, spring you know, copper and that goes in and pushes against the end of those uh, carbon rods and there was little uh, carbon deposits on both of them so I just took my Dremel and uh, like that and polished them up uh, the same thing on the inside of these where this uh, bracket here contacts when you have the pedal depressed all the way. There, there wasn't carbon deposits but there, there was uh, scratches and so forth. I th somebody had been in here before. When I got in here I could see that the end of the screw, dry, uh, screw had been uh, kind of bent and twisted before. So somebody was in here before. Um, I don't know who or why. But everything looked pretty pretty good. So my attempt is going to be to remember how I took it apart and put it back together. Here's the little rubber, rubber feet. And it looks like it already absorbed most of the oil I put into it. So, putting it back together, uh, let's see, the, the screw goes through here. This will go on the end plate. I don't know if you'll be able to see, 
see that there's a hole right through a hollow where the uh, screw goes through and I thought this was dirt but it's some kind of a like a I don't, like dabs of glue or something so I just I just left that there everything was dirty and dusty but I cleaned it up but I just left it there so starting with this with the Samanco label on the top I'll put my th screw through the end bracket and the little uh, copper spring and then the main spring goes on that like so and then we'll drop it in here and on this other side we've got to get the nut and one one side is flat and one's a little rounded and uh, the rounded end goes on first so that the flat side you know, I'm going to do this here. So the flat side goes up against the articulating bracket for a good fit. Let me get that in there. And, we'll... and this was, the way it was set up, this is a locking nut. So once you get it adjusted where you want it, you would, you would turn this uh, nut down to the back of the bracket. So the bracket will go on next. And that's why I think this, it's almost like beeswax glue combination or something. But it goes on like that. This, it doesn't screw on, it just slides on. Like so. And then what goes on here is the uh, contact. And there's two little ears folded over on the top to rest across the top of this and then two little ears that stick out to make contact with the copper contacts and that is also threaded so that's what holds the screw in place I think I can get it started with my uh, finger here and then get those ears situated right here on the top of, of this main bracket with the little ears facing this way forward, or I guess what I call forward. Um, and then I'm, I'm just going to snug this up a little bit for now so that I can get it uh, the back end kind of closed up here and lined up. two fingers in there like that yeah so I'm I think I'm going to start with the eighth inch spacing in the back that I saw in a one or two videos before and kind of a, a go from there because the this back plate before just seemed flush so I don't know if somebody uh, adjusted this before and that's how this, the head of the screw got kind of stretched or twisted out of place. See how we're looking here so far. Yeah, I've got to back that nut off a little bit more. You can see that. They want to close this back end up. There. So let me close this up. This is already in farther than it was. I kind of learned my lesson before.
That looks that looks a better better spacing. Let me just try this for a second and settle for that at the moment and I've got to put these um, this doesn't come off either this is riveted in there I can straighten it a little bit twist it back and forth but it doesn't come off so this goes like this with the bracket angled into the contact so these just take the little straight screw Now this should go, this should work better. Okay. Get that started in there. Snug that up good. That looks good. It seems like to me already that I have more movement against the spring before I hit that uh, full contact pins in the front which just bypasses the carbon and, and gives a full contact full speed, <clears throat> full speed ahead to the pedal. good okay now I think I'll get this mounted back into the base plate here so this these little tube tabs there's slots right there for it set it in there like that this is going to be up so you can push it with the button and we'll take our two long screws here and see if we can find the find the holes for them Ta -da. so those are definitely like a spacer give it some added stability and cushioning, I think. Okay, got that back in. Got my washer spacer things in. Let's tighten this guy up. this so far. So go on the end these will hold. So let's see about remounting the cord here. The way that this goes on, this little part that sticks up here with the little grabbing teeth, it seems to mesh up in here. And I haven't seen that before either. I'd seen this plenty of times. I'm wondering if somebody replaced the foot pedal on this before. And usually this will go go in like that to keep uh, as a strain relief. So let's see how this will 
think I can turn that too much. So we've got to get our bend back in here, but this was facing down before. I'd like to have it more facing up like that to grab the top of this. It's going to be more, maybe more like that. So let's put the one that had the bend to it over on this side. Let's see if I can get that. This is this off center. Let's pull that back a little bit. And it pretty much comes right out of the middle. I see one side is a little flatter. So maybe I can get that in there. I think that's how this is going to go to get this little copper bracket over that ring and hold it on there. All right, let's see. Is that going to... Can I get... Bring that ring sideways. On this silver bracket that's permanently mounted to the porcelain, there's some tabs in the back that you can uh, you you can align the wire into. And that's going to be to help hold it uh, stable and also provide some strain relief there. We're going to have that wire coming back here. And we can slide this back up. Okay, so we're seeing the same, the same thing here. Over Get the screw started in there. Now that I see what's in there more, I don't I don't think I would necessarily take that main screw out if the lock nut could be loosened so the screw could be turned tighter and then relocked there wouldn't be any reason to pull that screw out but I'm, I'm glad I did because there was a lot of carbon dust and some little burn marks on the copper spring in there so I think it was worth the effort but I could see why a lot of people who aren't into this or don't know about it would just buy an electronic uh, replacement pedal. Yeah, that's really looking good now. Now I gotta, now I gotta get this thing going here. And I think, I think I want to turn this tab up. sure which way is best to turn it maybe like that because I want that tab that sticks up to go up inside here that's how the other ones were made so I'm assuming that's how this one does that looks better yeah, that's in there good and tight now. So that's your strain relief to prevent damage to the cord. But, in my excitement to get that all straightened out, I forgot to put the button back in. Button slopes towards the front, I believe. Let's see. 
that look right. Yeah. Let's see if that I gonna go that way or this way. Now the other this the heel or toe rest slopes that way too, so that's gotta be it. Well, let's get this back in here. Get that lined up. Now does this Yeah. Oop. Let's stay together here. There we go. Oh, it's even a little quieter. <clears throat> I guess <clears throat> I guess before I did notice kind of a springy scratchy sound. I guess that spring was loose. Uh-oh. See these got to slip on the corners here. Oh boy. There. Okay. Spring's still good, yep. Yeah. See if I can lift this top part up. I think I'm going to lose my positioning on the cord. So I'll have to recheck that. <clears throat> okay, that's looking good. I think I got it all set now. I'll put this screws back in here. Just kind of get them started and then I'll, there we go. <clears throat> then I'll go back and tighten them up. so that they go in evenly. I know the bake light can be cracked, so I'll just go kind of opposite corners here and snug it up. I probably should have just laid that thing out there and tested it to see if I needed to adjust that, that screw anymore. If I do, I'm going to have to undo all of this. All right. <clears throat> Let's get this plugged in here. Make sure I have my stop motion turned back. And let's go plug this guy in. And see how it sounds now. Oh, yay, hey. Yay. <clears throat> yeah, I have more. Uh, it's I can do it more variable now. Okay, I'm going to say that's a success. That's the end of part 26, the chords and foot pedal. Thanks for watching.